So at Apple's iPad event, and that's what I'm calling it, because yeah, they talked about a new MacBook Air and the Mac Mini, but the star of the show really was the iPad Pro. At this event, Apple really showed us kind of a next step forward with what they're gonna do with tablets. They shrunk the bezels, they have amazing screens still, they packed them full of just amazing internals, and overall, they did a great job. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that we don't pay attention to anything outside of Chrome OS around here, but that's just not the case. We, we look at all tech and we think about all tech and how it will impact the market and all that kind of stuff. And so I watched the entire keynote actually and was really impressed by the iPad Pro. So much so that like there's part of me that for the larger model, I, I kind of wouldn't mind going and spending the money to get one. But the minute I started thinking about that, I started thinking about this and that is, what, what can I do with that device? And so in this video, we wanna talk about six things in particular that we feel like with the upcoming Google Pixel Slate, uh, things that you can do with a Chrome OS tablet, specifically the Pixel Slate, that you can't exactly do on an iPad Pro, even the larger one. And it breaks down to multiple things across multiple ways that you would use both of these devices. And they're not the same thing. And there are gonna be things that the iPad Pro will do better than the Pixel Slate or any other Chrome tablet, uh, probably for at least the next year, because Apple's had a lot of time to think about the hardware and software and how they work together in tablets. But if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering, can I get away with using a Chrome OS tablet? And what ways would it be better than actually having an iPad Pro? And so we wanna talk about six specific ways that we think Chrome OS on a tablet is actually gonna be a little bit better than an iPad Pro. Before we get into those six reasons though, this video is brought to you by Audible. And for our viewers today, if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash Chrome Unboxed, you can get a free audiobook with a 30 day trial to Audible. Number one, extended displays. Now, they did show on stage where the iPad Pro can hook into an extended display. And if the app supports it, some stuff can happen on the extended display, but that's up to the app developer. And it's not really up to iOS necessarily to say every time I hook it in, I'm gonna get an extended display. And if you're not sure what that means, an extended display means I get a secondary display I can put other stuff on. So instead of it just mirroring my display, I can actually drag other things onto that. Well that kind of becomes a difficult process to do when you don't really have a pointing mechanism. And that brings me to my second point. Number two, there is no trackpad mouse support of any type of pointing device really on an iPad. And that's by design. Apple's been very clear. Like the way that you deal with these touch devices is with a finger. I mean, Steve Jobs was very specific in saying you didn't even need a stylus. Now, of course, Apple's backtracked on that and there's the Apple Pencil and it's great. Like it, it writes really well and does lots of cool tricks and does all kinds of things, but it is not a substitute for a proper mouse or a trackpad when you're talking about productivity. So you're talking about moving between multiple apps, fine movements, uh, any kind of creation with logos and graphics and animation, stuff like that. It becomes really difficult to do that just with a pencil and with the blunt thing that is your finger. And so Yes, there is video editing. Yes, there's audio editing. Yes, there are photo editing on iPads. But when you really need to get down and get productive, sometimes you just really, really need mouse support. And especially like we just talked about for extended displays. If I need to move something onto that extended screen and then get to it to do something, well, that extended screen usually is not gonna be a touch screen. So all the touch things I have on the iPad won't do anything on that screen. Number three, file management. And I know this has been the bane for a lot of people who want to go out and take fi uh, photos or videos and then just hook it in and do something. Cause you know, like iMovie is, is really good. Actually, you can, you can create some pretty cool stuff with iMovie, but there's been a lot of uh, difficulty moving those files over and getting them in a place where you want to use them. Now there are ways around it and there's workarounds and Apple's even created a files app in iOS, but it's still not proper file management. And don't get me wrong, the file management on Chrome OS is not perfect by any means. I mean, Windows and Mac OS smoke both of these, honestly, as far as flexibility and, and the ability to do tons of stuff with file managers. But Chrome OS's file management's getting a lot better and it's getting stronger with each uh, iteration of the OS. And so now you can handle your Linux files, you can handle your Google Play files, you can handle your local Chrome OS files, all in that file manager, move things around, copy things, unzip, zip, all that kind of stuff. You can't do most of those things uh, in the Files app for iOS. And speaking of things on a desktop, number four is 
there's no desktop type multitasking. Now, Apple brought in, I think it was with iOS 10 or 11, something like that, the split screen thing. And so you can pull different apps and there's little shortcuts and that kind of stuff. But if you've ever worked from this type of system for any period of time, because Chrome OS does this, Windows does this, Android does this, uh, split screen multitasking kind of thing. If you've ever worked from it for an extended period of time, uh, you know how claustrophobic it just starts feeling after a bit. Like every once in a while, I wanna see my desktop underneath all the windows. And sometimes I just need to move this over here, but I need to move this up here and that one over there and this little thing over in the corner. And then maybe move this one over to an extended display. I can't do any of those things. So when I'm on an iPad and I'm full screen with an app and I bring another one in, I'm still full screen with two things right here and they take up the entire viewport all the time and so i've actually tried working like this i've i've put my chromebook in tablet mode and dropped it into a keyboard this is before it would just magically turn into a desktop whenever you did that and tried working just a keyboard and using touch controls i made it all of about 45 minutes before i was like okay that experiment done i, I can't work this way and so um, i just can't imagine working every single day on one screen and only being able to drag between two apps, it, that just seems really, really restrictive to me and not productive. And again, if this is a device you're using to consume content, edit a video every once in a while and that kind of stuff, no big deal. None of that's actually a problem. It's just, if you're really gonna get productive, you're gonna work six to eight hours on this thing every day. I really think that lack of desktop type multitasking with Windows all of a sudden starts becoming an issue. Another part of that whole desktop experience is a desktop browser. And so number five is the iPad lacks a proper desktop browser. And if you've used tablets and mobile browsers on tablets, you know the difference. A, you, you don't get extensions. So all those extensions you might lean on pretty heavily to get stuff done during the day, those are kind of out the window especially with Chrome and Safari. And so now you've, you've limited yourself in that way. And then additionally, if you need development tools in any way, shape or form, uh, you, you may not, you may never need this stuff. But again, I'm thinking about people trying to get stuff done. If you need those development tools in, in your browser, those aren't there either. And a lot of times mobile websites just render differently or some websites are set up to detect, are you on a mobile browser or are you on a desktop browser? And so, out of the box, you go to certain websites, you're always gonna get the mobile experience. It doesn't matter what size your screen is. And so there's a lot of hiccups when it comes to browsing the web and using it for productivity on a mobile browser. It's just not the same thing. And most of us know that. If you've ever had to use one for productivity, uh, you realize that that mobile browser isn't quite up to par with what you would get on a desktop. Chrome OS gets that full desktop, obviously, that full desktop Chrome experience, and all the tools and all the extensions are there when you need them, and so that becomes a lot more efficient at actually getting stuff done. And lastly, number six, if you are a developer in any way, shape, or form, if you develop for anything, basically, you're gonna have some issues using an iPad Pro as your main work device. And most of the tools that you would need just simply aren't there. And honestly, they didn't used to be there for Chrome OS either. You would have to either be on Mac OS or Windows, but now you can install Linux apps and Google's made it pretty clear. Like if you wanna develop Android apps, have a Chromebook and installing Linux apps is pretty straightforward and you can have whatever development thing you need in order to get that done at the end of the day. And that's just not there on iOS. So if you look at all six of these reasons together, and there, there are more, we scratched some off the list, but we wanted to kind of keep this condensed. What we really are trying to show you is not that iOS is inferior or a waste or not good. It is not to say that the iPad Pro is not an amazing piece of hardware. It looks really, really amazing. What we want it to do is help you choose is an iPad with iOS 12 or something like the Pixel Slate, a better option for me. And as we look at, for instance, with the new iPad Pro's pricing structure, all of a sudden the Pixel Slate doesn't look so bad. Everybody was kind of freaking out about how much it was gonna cost, and now it's like, oh, well, that's not that bad. Uh, there, there are gonna be benefits. There are gonna be things that the iPad will do better. Um, the, the A12 Bionic chip and some of the apps that are gonna be written for iPad, are just gonna flat out be better than the Android apps that will be written for 
uh, the Pixel Slate. And so you gotta know that going in. What are you gonna use this device for? Are you using it for consumption and gaming and entertainment reasons? Or are you really wanting something that you can sit down at work and take to work and get work done? Because the, the prime question I have to ask myself when something starts costing as much as either one of these devices is what can I use it for and is it worth that to me? And so if I start looking at the iPad, what I can use it for is just honestly a lot of entertainment stuff and I would have fun with it and I would like it because it's shiny and it's pretty and I like all the things it can do um, and I love the idea of how powerful the ARM chip is in it. I love where they're going with it because they're so far ahead of everyone else. But I really don't know how much work I can get done with it. And so when I look at the Pixel Slate, for instance, or any upcoming uh, Chrome OS tablet that has good hardware, because I think we're going to see a lot of them, when I look at those devices, I can say, hey, as these Android apps keep getting better and as progressive web apps keep getting better, these experiences on the tablet are going to just keep getting better and smoother and, and, and more enjoyable to use. But then when I'm ready to work, I can put a keyboard and, and, and a mouse with this or a trackpad or something like that. I can extend my displays. I can do all sorts of things and I won't skip a beat when it comes to getting my job done and being productive. And so I can kind of have the best of both worlds over here. Is it the best tablet? No, uh, I can t we don't have one yet. And I can tell you the Pixel Slate compared to the iPad Pro will not be a better tablet. That, there's just no way it can be at this point. The software is just now coming along and Apple is years ahead in that game. But if you're looking for a device that's gonna satisfy some entertainment needs, some tablet needs, look good while doing it, be a nice piece of hardware, but then be very productive at the same time and actually jump into a desktop mode and be able to get some stuff done, then I really do feel like with these six reasons we've given and even a couple more that you might even have come up with while you've watched this video that you really should give the Pixel Slate a look when it becomes available later in November. Guys, that's it for this one. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button below, and until next time, we'll see you.